one of the perennial problems we have as process engineers on crude distillation units is controlling their diesel oil endpoint. That is, you look at your D86 distillation or your simulated distillation and the diesel oil endpoint, which is supposed to be 670, is 700. So that's the problem. I want to diminish the diesel oil endpoint, but I don't want to diminish diesel oil production. It's 10,000 barrels a day, and I'm not going to change it. I mean, obviously, if I simply cut back on diesel oil flow rate, then the diesel oil endpoint would go down as I flush the heavier endpoint components off of tray five, down, tray six, seven, eight, nine, down into the AGO. But that's not what I want. I do not want to diminish diesel oil production. I need to keep it the same. I need to keep it the same by improving fractionation efficiency between diesel oil and AGO. From the engineer's perspective, I want to increase fractionation efficiency, just like you increase fractionation efficiency on any tower, by doing two things, increasing the reflux rate and the boil up rate. From the operator's perspective, I want to improve fractionation efficiency like you would in any tower by making the trays work harder. And the trays that have to work harder to improve fractionation efficiency between diesel oil and NHO is to make trays six, seven, eight, and nine, which fractionate between the light front end of atmospheric gas oil product and the heavy tail of diesel oil. How could I make these trays work water? Or from the process engineer's perspective, we say as chemical engineers, how could we increase the internal reflux rate? If this was a propane butane splitter, I would simply crank up the reflux rate, but then of course I'd have to crank up the reward of duty, because if I simply crank up the reflux rate on a propane butane splitter, and then add more heat to the reboiler, then rather quickly the reflux drum level would go empty. However, I do not want to add more heat to the flash onto the crew tower. So the question is, in order to lower the diesel oil endpoint without reducing diesel oil production and with a constant heat input to the tower, what should I do to the heat extracted in the pump around? Notice that I did not say the pump around circulation rate, because sometimes increasing the pump around circulation rate may take more heat out, and sometimes it takes less heat out. I'll discuss that in a separate video. I simply said, what should I do to the heat extracted in the pump around loop to lower the diesel endpoint? Take more heat out or less heat? And the correct answer and I know this is somewhat counterintuitive, the correct answer is to reduce heat extraction in the pump round, to let more heat go up the tower. Why is that counterintuitive? Because one says, oh, more heat, higher endpoint, higher boiling range components driven up the tower. But in this case, since I am assuming that tower top is on automatic temperature control, which it usually is, to control the naphtha endpoint, assuming the tower top is on automatic temperature control, as I diminish the heat extraction in the AGO pump round, then more heat goes up the tower. And since the tower top temperature will start to get hot, the reflux rate increases. And since I have, as I've said repeatedly, I'm keeping the diesel oil draw off rate constant at 10,000 barrels a day, and since the amount of liquid flowing down the tower is increased, because the reflux rate is increasing, because we're on tower top temperature control, then the amount of liquid overflowing from tray five onto tray six, onto tray seven, onto tray eight, and onto tray nine will increase. And what have I done? I have increased the vapor liquid traffic on these trays that fractionate between the light front end of gas oil and the endpoint of diesel oil. Again, how do I make trays work better? By increasing their internal reflux rate. 
or by making the trays work too hard. So in this case, I improve the endpoint of the diesel oil by reducing the heat extraction, the AGO, to generate more heat, to generate more reflux. Just like on a propane butane splitter, I would raise the reboiler duty and the reflux rate to fractionate more efficiently between propane and butane to lower the amount of heavy components butane in the propane. Except there's something wrong in everything I've said. What is wrong is I've made an assumption. I have assumed that trays six, seven, eight, and nine will work better as they work harder. In general, that's true. In general, we have the expectation that increase in the reflux rate will improve fractionation efficiency as we learned in school when we studied the McCabe field diagram. But guys, sometimes these trays may be overloaded, or sometimes trays six through nine could be fouled. And now as I attempt to increase fractionation efficiency by making these trays work harder and better, I overload them in the sense that they start to suffer down coming back up or entrainment. And thus I have fallen below the maximum tray efficiency because of flooding or entrainment. And if that happens, then the diesel oil endpoint, which you think should go down and ordinarily will, will unfortunately go up. How can the operator then know what to do? Since the operator does not actually know whether bad fractionation is due to flooding, entrainment, or dumping, tray decks leaking or weeping, how can he tell if he doesn't want to wait for laboratory samples whether he's moving in the right direction by doing what I suggested by reducing the AGO heat extraction to generate more reflux. How can he tell whether this makes the situation better or worse right away? What you do guys is you look at the draw temperature difference between diesel oil and AGO. If what I suggest is true, that reducing AGO pump round heat extraction to generate more reflux is moving us in the right direction, then this draw temperature difference between the diesel oil drawer and the AGO drawer temperature will go up. If it goes down, then you're moving in the wrong direction. You're simply promoting entrainment. So this is the way we could use the heat extraction of the AGO pump round to improve fractionation between diesel oil and AGO. In a way, this kind of sounds bad. In a way, it sounds bad because what I'm really saying that in general, pump rounds make fractionation worse. But why do we have pump rounds if they make fractionation worse? Because the main advantage of the pump round is heat recovery. If I don't recover the heat here to preheat crude, then where's that heat going? It's going to the overhead condenser and being lost to cooling water. So that's the price we pay ordinarily for enhanced fractionation efficiency in a tower. If you want to improve fractionation efficiency between diesel oil and AGO, lower the diesel oil endpoint without losing any more diesel oil into the AGO, you pay a price and the price again is loss of crude preheat.